Visit exercise 4. Mono versus flux. No difference here, right? The programming model is the same, except that mono can return 0 or 1 time. Flux can return 0 or n times. So when I say 0 or n times, there is this concept of something completing. Okay? It's like, what is n? It cannot be an infinite stream, right? You, you do have infinite streams in flux, but there is a certain point where, you know, for you think of the iterator pattern, right? Again, drawing a parallel here. The iterator pattern, at some point of time, when the caller says, give me next, the person who's sending the data will go, this is all I have, right? With this pattern, with the observer pattern, you are not really saying, give me next, right? The, you're saying what to do, when the next item happens. So at some point of time, so this thing is sending data, right? It sends one data, it sends a couple more. When it's run out of data, it doesn't just leave the observer hanging, which is a bad thing, right? The observer is waiting, like, I'm, I'm waiting here for this source to give me data. The source is like, I'm already done. I've moved on. I'm not in this business anymore. And the poor observer is waiting. That's, that's not good. So the, these, both the flux and the mono, have a concept of a completion event, okay? Not just the event where the data is emitted. There is also a con the concept of I'm done, okay? Just like with iterative programming, you say it's done the same way. Here, it's not, the done doesn't come as a result of a next. The done comes when the source feels like, okay, I have no more data. It could be immediately after the last data is sent, right? I send the last data, I don't have anything else. I'm gonna immediately send the on done event or it can go, like, I send data, I'm waiting, it waits for some more, and then it realizes, oops, we are done, so it sends the done. And of course, there is also a possibility of infinite streams where the done never comes. Okay, that's also possible. So at any point of time, what comes is one of three things. It could be an item that needs to be processed. When you do a subscribe, what you're going to get back, you can get an item that needs to be processed. You can get a complete event. Uh, it can say, Okay, no more items, I'm done. That is also one of the possible things that can be sent to an observer. And the third thing, my guess, is a failure event. Something went wrong. Something went wrong, there was an error. That is also a thing that can be sent. Okay, so typically, when you're working with a mono, let's start with mono, it's a simple use case. I say zero or n items, right? It can say zero items, in which case you subscribe to a mono and you immediately get a complete event. Not immediately, maybe later, but at some point of time, the first thing you're gonna get back from the mono is a complete event, which means it has zero things to send. Zero items, that's a possibility. Or it can send one item, but if it sends one item, it has to send a complete event because a mono is zero or one, that's it. So if it sends one item, it cannot send the second item, right? It has to send a complete event after. It can again send it immediately or it can send it a bit later, but it has to send a complete event. I think for mono, it sends it immediately. I'm not sure. But yeah, there has to be a complete event only. It cannot be anything else. Or it can be a failure event. It sends no events. The first event that it sends is a failure event. That is also possible for a mono. For a flux, it can send the item first, then a complete event or a bunch of items and a failure event, or can send a complete event right up front, in which case there are zero elements coming from the flux, or it can send a failure event right up front, again, zero elements coming from the flux, or it can just keep sending events and never send a complete event. That is also possible. So all these are possibilities, right? But there is a contract associated with the flux versus mono. The thing to remember is that the complete event and the failure event are what are referred to as terminal events, which means that if a flux or a mono were to send a complete event, it cannot send any other event. Like for example, it can't send an item after that. It can't send another complete event after that as well. It can only send one complete event. Or after it sends a complete event, it cannot send a failure event. It's complete, it's done, success, right? Similarly, a failure event is also a terminal event. At any point of time in a flux or a mono, if you get a failure event, it is not going to emit again. Okay, it's not going to emit a legitimate value after that. 
it is not going to emit a complete event after that. A failure is a terminal event. Once a failure happens, that's the end of that mono or flux. Nothing else happens after that. Okay? That's what's referred to as terminal events. The item is the only non-terminal event. When an item is emitted in a flux, okay? An item is emitted in a flux. There can be more coming. In a mono, if an item is emitted, there's only one other event coming, which is a complete event. And that's it. That becomes a terminal event, right? But when a complete or a failure event happens in each of these, a flux or a mono, there's nothing else coming after that. Is this clear? Any questions about this? I see a question here. What's the best way of doing multi-threading? Is callable or supplier or completable future? Depends on your use case, really. If you're talking about best way to do multi-threading in general, that's outside the scope of this workshop. If you're talking about how to do multi-threading in reactive programming, depends on the use case. So it's basically you as the producer of these of the flux who needs to figure out where these things run, okay? We are not doing producing, we are still consuming, right? So it really depends on the producer, depends on the use case. 